Moving to Hawaii is not easy and it's definitely not cheap. If you're in the military, then hey, they're going to do it for you. But for those of you who are not in the military, this is not going to be a cheap move. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down some of these costs, not just flights, but how much does it cost to ship a car if you have pets and a lot of other factors we're going to give you some tips and tricks and things that you need to be aware of if you're making that move to Hawaii. And we can really get an idea of how much these costs are and how much you should save. And we're going to talk about that right now. What's going on? Welcome to the Living in Hawaii channel. If you are new here, this channel is all about what it's like to live in Hawaii, what it's like to eat, sleep, play, do all of that and more from somebody who was raised in Hawaii and has spent more of my life in Hawaii than anywhere else in the world. Now, if you're not new here, hey, welcome on back. Make sure you all hit that like button. It's going to help anybody else be able to find these helpful videos. Hit the subscribe button and the easiest way for you to get notified when we put a new video out on this channel is for you to hit that notification bell. It's going to give you a little ding to your phone or whatever device it is. It's going to say, hey, look, living in Hawaii put out a new video and you're probably going to want to watch it. All right. Now, look, we get so many people reaching out about their move to Hawaii or they're already in Hawaii and they're trying to find a place that best fits their lifestyle. Whichever one you are, however you're comfortable, you can reach out. You can shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email. Uh, the email is going to be right here on the screen for you or down in the description below. However, it, again, it is that you're comfortable. We got your back when it comes to anything and everything living in Hawaii. So like I said in the beginning, I wanted to really give you a breakdown and really give you a good idea of how much it costs to move to Hawaii. This is something that some people, I guess, just don't take that serious. They, oh, I'm going to move to Hawaii. And it's like, well, have you really thought about this? Do you have enough savings? Have you really thought about all these things, flights, uh, whether you're going to have to rent um, when you first get here or how much an Airbnb might be or a hotel might be? Whether, you know, gas prices, are you shipping your household goods? These types of things that really start to just add up, right? These things really start to add up. So that's what I wanted to do is I want to do a video where I'm going to break it down for you. We're going to go through a lot of these so that we can get a real good estimate for how much money it is that's going to cost you potentially and how much you should have saved just in case. You always want to have a good cushion just in case crap hits the fan. So let's get into this and let's talk about some of these things. This is the general one that a lot of people will look at first. All right. They want to look at the airlines. They want to see how much it's going to cost to fly to Hawaii. That's essentially the only way to get here. Um, unless you're driving one of them cargo ships, which I highly doubt that you're driving a cargo ship out here to move. But flights, that's what everybody's looking at first. How much does it cost? Well, gas prices we know have gone up just tremendously throughout 2022. And this does impact airline ticket prices. So what is the typical airline price? Now, this could be a wide, wide range because it really depends on where you're coming from. All right. You could be coming from California. You could be coming from Las Vegas. You could be coming from the northwest in Washington. All right. Or you could be coming from the complete other side and you could be coming from New York, South Florida, anywhere on the East Coast, right? So it really depends where, but I wanted to take you into Google and just do a quick Google search and show you. But typically speaking, all right, East Coast, a little bit more expensive, probably gonna be around that five to $800 range one way. If you bought a ticket recently, that, that ticket from the East Coast, hey, drop it in the comments and let us know how much it was if you're comfortable with that, all right? Give us a range if you'd like to do that. Now, typically when you're talking about anywhere in the center or a lot of people coming here from Texas, you're gonna be around that $500 mark as well. Typically, right? That's that one way. So we're not talking round trip, we're talking one way. And now the West Coast is typically cheap. So Vegas, Ninth Island, we travel to Vegas quite a bit. And for Vegas anyway, we're looking at how much it costs to fly to Vegas. Sometimes those ticket prices are like $200 or less. Now, sometimes they're like $600, right? So it really varies. But I wanted to take you into Google and we can really check that. All right, with just a quick Google search, you can literally type in like flights from your city or your airport to Honolulu and get a good idea for this. Now, I just typed in flights from Houston to Honolulu just to get a gauge on that one. So when we look at it, all right, and you see there's so many things around with this. There's, you know, everybody thinks, you know, the cookies and they got me cookies, so they're going to increase my prices, all this type of stuff. It's, it's wild and it's crazy. But the dates matter when you're buying them. Are you buying them on a Monday versus a Saturday? All of these things really play a factor. Now, like I said earlier, anywhere from that five to eight hundred dollar range. All right. And now you can even see down here. But I am going to change this because this says round trip. Remember, um, so that's nonstop. I fly nonstop. I don't like stopping. 
But um, so here we go. I chose one way and it actually dropped tremendously. So the round trip was anywhere from 624 to 841. And this was in December. Now, let me change this to a one way because we ain't returning, right? We're moving. We're coming to Hawaii. We moving. All right. So um, December 12th. I don't know why I sound like a cow there, but we're looking at December 12th. And you can see here um, right here on the bottom, you're looking at Delta's got a 15 hour. Wow. 15 hours. There's got to be a layover in there. Yeah, connecting, see, woo. But your nonstop flight is gonna be 491. So right around that $500 range, like we talked about for this date, all right? So that nonstop is gonna be 491. Now, if you're okay with the 18 hour connecting flights, then hey, look, you got 303 there. Um, but that all depends on who you are, right? So let's check another one, all right? Let's check um, more like uh, West Coast. So let's do San Diego, okay? And look at San Diego. So you can see here, San Diego, same date. All right, we're doing a one way. You can see that we've got a multiple airline. This is almost a day of traveling for $175. Um, or you can take Hawaiian, which is what we typically fly. We love to fly Hawaiian Airlines. But you can see that a six hour and 10 minute nonstop flight, um, depending on if you catch the trade winds. If you catch the trade winds, it can actually boost you. It's funny, like when you're flying, you don't really feel it, but the trade winds can like sort of push the plane forward um, coming into the island. It's pretty cool. But that flight, it says six hour and 10 minutes. It's usually around a five and a half to five hour and 45 minutes. Um, but they got it here at 449. So this is still getting closer to that $500 range. So let's go ahead and plan for this $500 ticket price range. Now, if I were you, I would have a planned $1,000 per person, all right, just in case. Because again, you never know what happens. That was in December where we were looking at, depending on your time, your date, all right. I would basically just plan to have a $1,000 per person ready. Now, again, if it's less than a thousand, which I was just showing you 451 or 449, like great, all right, we had that cushion just in case. So per person, I would say that you wanna plan to have around that $1,000 mark per person just in case. Now let's take a look at some of these other expenses. Another fat expense if you are bringing a car to Hawaii is the cost to ship that car to Hawaii. Now this is company dependent and I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. So if you reach out to me, I have no ins to any of these companies. I don't talk to any of these companies. I get nothing from this, all right, by talking about any of these companies, all right. This is just from my experience and other people's experience that we have helped make that move. And it really depends on what you're comfortable with and what you can afford and those types of things. But there are some common companies out there, one of those being Matson, which I'm just gonna show you here in a second. Matson is the M-A-T-S-O-N. You see it on all the big freights and stuff like that. Um, there's another company called Hawaii Car Transport. That's another company that you can go check out. Again, all your own due diligence is required. Ryan didn't say to use them. Ryan's just bringing these up and you can go do your homework. If you've had an experience with either of those, good or bad, paste it in the comments, right? Put your, put your experience down in the comments so anybody making that move can see and get their own feel for it. Kind of like leave your own review in the comments. But yeah, so let's talk about these prices. These can range anywhere, you know, from $900 up to over $2,500. Size of the car is one of the biggest things. How much does your car weigh? You've got to think that these things are getting picked up. If you're doing door-to-door -door services, which some of those do offer like a door-to-door -door service, what that means is they will essentially come to your house, wherever it is, all right, and put your car on the big 18-wheeler, all right, and then they will drive and you'll see your car at the next destination, right, in Hawaii. So door-to-door -door service. Now, that can get a little bit more expensive because if you're on the East Coast, all right, you got to really, let's, let's use some sense here. If you're on the East Coast and you're trying to ship a car, they're probably going to pick that car up and they're probably going to drive that thing all the way to California, okay, to get to the ports in California. And then from the ports in California, it's going to get on a freight or a cargo, and then uh, it's going to basically travel across the water. So you got to think, depending on where you are, these things could get a little bit more expensive. If you're closer to the West Coast, hey, look, not so bad. All right, California ports are pretty close by. East Coast, a little bit more expensive. Down in Florida, I believe that they just pretty much drive down to Florida and just kind of, you know, cruise all the way around. But let's take a look at some of these prices, because like I said, it could be anywhere from like $900 up over $2,500. So let's pull up Matson and let's show you what they're saying, because they're one of the most common ones that we hear from people and our clients that we've helped. So let's take a look at Matson. Just quickly Googled it and pulled up Matson, but you can see M-A-T-S-O-N. Again, I have no affiliation with them. 
Ryan didn't tell you to use them. It's do your own due diligence. But basically, you can get a quote from them. And if we go right here on their website, you can see right here, how much does it cost? All right, how much does it cost to ship a car to Hawaii? Let's zoom that in a little bit for y'all watching on your phone so you can see. All right, the cost to ship a car to Hawaii from US mainland, all right, starts at 1597, okay? That's what they're saying, 1597. So it starts being that keyword. What kind of car is it? How big is this car? How much does it weigh? All right, there's a lot of things that go into this, okay? View our pricing page for more details on the cost to ship a car to or from Hawaii by origin and destination port. Okay, we'll go there in just a second, but you got a quick drop off and pick up. You can do real time tracking port to port. All right, so how long does it take? That's one of the other big questions you can see right here. So to Hawaii from US mainland, you're gonna be looking at 19 to 33 days. So is there, depending on what time the car gets there can be a factor. So remember when we shipped our car, it was like, okay, where is this thing? I know that they told us uh, three weeks, it's been 21 days, but where is it? Turns out there was a delay because the car actually got to um, the, the, the next facility at like midnight. And then basically the, that first day that it was there, it had to process, they had to check it, right? All those things. And then they had to get wait for somebody to be ready to come and take it to the next area. So there's these delays happening in between, um, but it did say that they have port to port tracking. Now I'm gonna zoom that out and let's go back up to the pricing page. So car shipping cost and payment. So you can see here, our vehicle shipping rates are the same for all passenger automobiles, including vehicles commonly known as station wagons, limousines, passenger vans. Oh, there you go. See? So these car shipping rates do not apply to any vehicles exceeding 21.8, all right, in length. So your big trucks, um, and then your width, and then your height, all right, eight feet, seven feet. So for Tacoma, Alaska, and Guam ports, please see specific qualifying dimensions. So I'm telling you, like, I'm showing you this because I'm showing you, like, it does really matter how big your car is. But even here, uh, Tacoma, Washington, all right, Long Beach, you can see that they have these different prices. Remember how I was saying it can get a little bit more expensive? So Tacoma, uh, Washington to Honolulu, you're looking at $23.94 there, all right? And then if you got some other ones like Fairbanks, if you're coming from Alaska, um, you got over $4,000. So there's some rates there, give you a good idea, but let's go ahead and plan and save some money for around that $2,500 mark, just in case. There you have it. We just showed you those prices from Matson. That's just one of the more common ones. So just kind of recapping here off of the two that we've already talked about. We talked about flights, $1,000 per person. All right, so plan for $1,000 per person, depending on how many, if you're just traveling by yourself, plan for that $1,000. Hopefully it doesn't get more than that. It can, but let's just plan for that. And then we're talking about shipping a car. If you are bringing a car, okay, if you are bringing a car, let's say we're going to plan and save for about $2,500 or $2,500. So now we're already looking at $3,500 for these two things alone. Okay, so we've still got more to go. Hang in there, but we're going to get through this and we're going to really give you a good idea of how much it is you might need, all right, on a typical move to Hawaii. Not to be sort of <laughs> doom and gloom here, but let's hit you with another cost that you really have to consider and why are we considering this? So buying a house sight unseen or not even being in Hawaii is very possible. We've helped plenty of people do that. Not even being in Hawaii, basically doing everything virtual, FaceTime, Zooms, um, pre or, you know, recordings of showings, those types of things and going through that process. They have been here before, we found the house, all that type of stuff. But when it comes to renting, okay, or getting here and then wanting to buy, right? If you're not trying to do this whole thing sight unseen, first let's talk about buying. If you get here and you wanna buy a house right away, you're gonna need to stay somewhere. And that's gonna be probably a hotel or Airbnb, all right? Now, if you are renting, all right, you're gonna try to rent sight unseen. We talked to so many people about this and we have a full video on this about renting in Hawaii, how much it costs and the things that you need to know on this channel. But renting while you are not in Hawaii is not the easiest thing to do. It is not the easiest thing to do and it's pretty difficult. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. And there's a lot of reasons why. Okay, I definitely recommend you go checking out that video. But 
you're probably going to have to stay in an Airbnb or a hotel when you first get here before you can find a place to rent. Now, again, have people found a place to rent before they got here? Yes, absolutely. But for the most part, it's pretty difficult thing to do. So what happens is you end up staying in a hotel or Airbnb, or if you're thinking about buying right away and you don't want to do the whole site unseen thing, you're probably going to have to stay in a hotel or Airbnb. So that's why I bring this up and for these costs. All right. So what this means to you is another cost that you have to prepare for. So hotel prices, again, these things fluctuate, supply and demand. It's always like that for anything and everything. Okay. Airbnb is the same thing. Okay. So let's actually go in. I love just showing you instead of me just telling you. All right. I love to show you what it's looking like for this time frame. So I'm going to show you again, like we've done for the other two here on Airbnb. All right. I just went in and I put basically your flight. You're going to be in Honolulu and you need it for the month of December. We talked about flights in December. So let's go ahead and stick with the month of December. Just to, for, for example purposes. Again, you could watch this a year from now and it'd be totally different, but let's use December as a month um, for these example purposes. So right here on Airbnb, there's an apartment here in Honolulu, um, a queen bed studio for 2150 for an entire month all right there's another one here for 2506 for an entire month and got a plenty here 3300 2400 so it really depends on you know are you moving here with kids or are you moving here by yourself how big of an airbnb might you need all right that is really going to play a factor okay so this thing varies quite a bit okay now let's go ahead and go over to um hotels okay so hotels in waikiki i just quick google search okay same thing we talked about december and for roughly a month and you can see that basically all these hotels down here in Waikiki are available for that month starting December 12th. This is still a ways out. Now, if you try to do this on a whim, these prices are probably going to get a little bit more expensive. Now, if you're doing planning way ahead, like again, December 12th, and at the time I'm recording this in October of 2022, we got a little bit of time. But when it comes to these, you can see 339, 445. This one's 261, the Hyatt uh centric waikiki beach 290 so these actually aren't that bad okay december be a little bit slower month for the hotel industry out here because we're getting into the the holidays and christmas people don't travel here a ton for christmas um it's more of the slower period so right there you got a couple costs this one is super dependent variable dependent on how many people you need a place for okay i have it just set for two okay right here now we could add in two children right something like that and see what comes up 428 still not that bad 500 383 487 but you're probably going to need to book something for about a month that way you can get here you can really explore the communities and really get yourself set in a good position now we're going to go ahead and add this one to our cost so we said a thousand dollars for the flights per person is what i would just save for all right to give yourself a good cushion if can if possible okay we talked about shipping a car if you're bringing a car we're looking at roughly $2,500 is what I would save for. And then hopefully we'll get something cheaper. So I'm giving you like more expensive. All right. I'm giving you the more expensive tally because hopefully you're going, all right. He said it should probably save for like 2,500. I was able to find something for a thousand. Great. I've got $1,500. What can I do with it? Can I save it or do I need it for something else? Right. So that's kind of the methodology here. And then we just talked about, um, just shocked. I don't even know what I was just trying to say. We just talked about renting. Okay. And so whether it be an Airbnb or a hotel, I would basically plan for $2,000 on that front. Because again, depends on the size. There's so many variables and it's hard for me to really give you a number for every single person that's going to watch this is scenario. But let's plan for $2,000 as a good cushion if you can. All right. And if doable. So those are the numbers that we're looking at right now. Let's continue on. If you are traveling here with pets, this is another expense. Now we have an entire video that breaks down the traveling with pets here process. And if you have been on a zoom call with me and Ridge, or you have talked to me anyway, you're going to know that one of my first questions, cause I'm, I'm a dog person and I love animals. All right. One of my first questions to you is, are you going to be traveling here with pets? And then how far along are you in that process? Okay. That's one of my first questions on our zoom calls. Some I'm pretty passionate about. We have an entire video on this channel about moving here with pets. It describes the process in detail. We have links for the Hawaii Department of Agriculture's uh, PDF checklist, the five days or less quarantine checklist or the uh, direct release checklist. Check out that video. I wanted to keep this one a little bit brief because not a lot of people are um, 
excuse me, are gonna be traveling here with pets. Whew, lost for words today. But now a lot of people are gonna be traveling here with pets. Couple things that you do need to know just to keep it brief is that your crate, you're gonna need a crate. Now the crate specifics are that the dog cannot be touching the top of the crate when they are standing upright in the crate and the dog or the cat, sorry, need to be uh, able to turn around, all right? They need to be fully able to turn around and not rub up against the sides of the crate, all right? They have to have enough space in the crate. One of the newer things that they have put out is that it cannot have cornered edges, all right? They have to be rounded edges. And now if you think about it, if somehow the crate flips on its side or over top or whatever like that, that ha if it's cornered edges, uh, this is my methodology or theory anyway, it can't necessarily roll back over. If it has the rounded corners on the tops and the bottoms, right, the rounded corners, then the dog may be able to, or the cat may be able to get it back upright. So it really depends, but there's some new things going on. So you gotta plan for crate expense. You're gonna have all of these shots. If you haven't done it already, you're gonna have to get your shots. And now if your dog does have to stay in quarantine, this is gonna be another expense. All right, and now the rate, it really varies, you know, how many days and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna say here is, Go ahead and just plan for, just plan for roughly around $500 for your pet. Now this is crate and a bunch of other things, um, but plan for roughly around $500. Hopefully you don't have to spend that much, but $500 for your pet. So we had the flights at a thousand. We had the car transport at 2,500. We had rent at 2,000. And now we're looking at around $500 for pets. So we're starting to add up here, but you can see how this thing, again, we're planning for more and hopefully having to spend less. How much stuff are you bringing? Are you getting rid of a lot of things? As we said in plenty of our videos before, is look, if you're moving here, you're probably gonna wanna downsize. That monstrous couch that you have in your monstrous living room back, back home, wherever back home is, probably gonna have to downsize, all right? Now, again, this just comes with, you know, you're paying more for less in Hawaii. And what I mean by that is more condensed, homes are smaller, all right? There's less for more. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for paradise. So when it comes to bringing your household goods, this one again is super variable dependent and all of these are really, but super variable depending on how much you're going to bring. One of the more common things, Matson's another one, you can bring up Matson again, but one of the more common ones that you'll see, especially just driving around, you'll see them is pods. A lot of people will use pods to get their household goods here. And a lot of people use pods to move, all right, their household goods out of here. So this one is really, really dependent on the size of the pod, how much weight, all that type of stuff, right? So they got 12 foots, 16 foots, they got really, really small ones, and this really, really depends. But basically, we called and got a quote, and what they were telling us is for a 12-foot pod, all right, for a 12-foot pod, it was gonna run roughly around $4,000. Now, that's at this time of this recording, it could change. If you've used pods, hey, leave it down in the comment and let us know if you've used any other company, let us know down in the comments. You can look up plenty of these. Again, we're not affiliated with any of these. I did get nothing from pods, Matson. You can check out Royal Hawaiian Movers. I don't get anything from them either. These are just some of the common ones that we know that people use. If you've used any of those, again, leave that comment and let other people know what your experience was. That way they can see, all right, with somebody who has done it firsthand too, all right, not just from me. But again, $4,000 is what we were quoted at. So this is something you really gotta think like, do we need all this stuff? Or can, can we store it somewhere here? Will it be cheaper to do that? Are we coming back? What's the plan here, right? So, and that's one of the reasons we gotta get on this call. So you can give us a call and we can talk about this. But let's go ahead and say, for the purposes of this, we're gonna put $4,000 on our ticker over here. So we have $1,000 per person for the flight, okay? We got the $2,500 for the car. We got the $2,000 for the rent. We got the $500 for the pet, all right? And now we're looking at $4,000 for a pod to get over here with some household goods. That's just a 12 footer, all right, as an example, all right? Now you can call and get your own quote because again, it really matters where are you coming from? What is, they're gonna ask you, like what is your zip code? You can even go to their site and you can put it in and you get a quote from Madsen, Royal Hawaiian Movers, Pods, U-Haul, all that stuff. You can go check it out and get your quote. But I hope it's less than $4,000, I really do. Um, but let's go ahead and put that on our ticker and let's keep going. So how much should you have ready and saved for this move? This is big, big, big question, all right? And you've heard, we've been tallying this thing up, so you've been following along, all right, throughout this whole video. Let's just tack it up one more time. We said 
thousand dollars per person for flights again i hope it's less i hope it's way less than a thousand dollars but again that's going to be nice for you as you go you know we did we planned for a thousand dollars for flights and there were only 300 for those one ways yes amazing score right now thousand dollars for flights we said twenty five hundred dollars for the vehicle you only had to spend fourteen hundred dollars yes score again right so let's thousand dollars twenty five hundred rent depending on size of you your family the, the place that you want to rent those types of things we said two thousand dollars okay then we talked about pets if you're moving here with pets we said plan for around five hundred dollars okay we're starting to add up and then one of the last things that we went into was shipping household goods okay we talked about pods and a bunch of these other companies but we said we're going to plan for four thousand dollars it only cost you two thousand dollars yes score right but for the purposes of this video and these hypothetical examples we are tallying this up to be roughly you're going to want to have saved and ready around ten thousand dollars for this move to hawaii that's again if you're not in the military and the military is not doing it for you you're going to want to plan and save for around ten thousand dollars for this move i hope that it's less and i hope you can save wherever at all possible but that is going to give you a good cushion all right give you a pretty good cushion just in case crap hits the fan all right things change life happens all the time all right and things can change so that's what we're going to tally up and save for is around that ten thousand dollar mark We ran through some of the bigger costs and expenses that you're going to need to prepare for when it comes to moving to Hawaii. All right, we tallied this up for you, and this is exactly why you got to reach out. Just like we said in the beginning of the video, you can reach out however you're comfortable. Shoot me a DM, shoot me a text, give me a call, send me an email, however you want to get a hold of us myself and our team have your back when it comes to anything living in hawaii and if you made it this far and you haven't already hit the like button please do so it's going to help anybody else be able to find these helpful videos hit the subscribe button and ding that notification bell that way you get notified it's going to be the easiest way you get notified whenever we put a new video out just like this on our channel all right and if you haven't gone through our channel you can click my face right there and you're going to go to our channel and it's going to show you all of our videos all of our playlists that we can start discovering these areas we're out there in the communities doing vlog tours showing you the homes walking through these neighborhoods all that and more is on this channel and a lot of that's going to start popping up for you right now